Let's take a look at Edgecam's integrated 3D solid modeling solution. Edgecam workflow for solids, or EWS for short. We can access EWS from the setup tab within inside of Edgecam. This takes us through to the 3D design environment, whereby we have a couple of sketch tools and 3D design options available to us for creating simple solid models. We can also access advanced options from the advanced panel. We'll start by creating a 2D sketch. This will represent the basic profile we, want, we wish to extrude at a later stage. Utilizing our dimensional and logical constraints, we'll define the model using given dimensions. Utilizing our logical constraints, we can define our profile further and utilizing our trimming options, trim back some of the unwanted geometry. We can now move through to our 3D commands and you will note that we can use the EWS dynamic modeling techniques by simply dragging our widget. In this case, I'll explicitly define a depth. Moving forward, we can define further sketches. And in this case, I'll select the bottom plane of this model and sketch a simple block by further defining sizes. We'll now extrude this. And here we have a number of options where we can add some draft and or alternatively add blend radiuses or chamfers to the upper and lower profiles. We'll simply select a vertical wall profile. At any stage, You'll notice that we can refer back to the storyboard or history tree as you may know it. And by simply double clicking on the command, it will take us back to that stage in the design process. We can further make additional edits to our profile. And in this case, I'll add some chamfers to the corners and validate that change. We may want to use the drill option or hole option And here we can see we have a various number of hole types from countersunk holes to simple holes including counterboard holes and a various number of others. Once again we can further come back to our command and further constrain our drawing. And in this case, I'll set that back 30 millimeters and accept that change. We can use some advanced options whereby I'll use utilize the linear option, select the feature I wish to create copies of, and in this case, I'll select the reverse direction. Specify my distance and accept that. 
we can also utilize our circular pattern command select the feature and in this case I'll select to create six copies I may wish to add a thread to some of these holes and here we can see we can add thread information to these holes Ed edge cam will evaluate the hole and assign defined thread based on a specific standard. We can override these using the number of different standards available to us. In this case, I'll select to only apply the thread to a couple of these holes. Further off, We'll go and assign a couple of other features. And utilizing the cut command, we can extrude this to a specific depth. In this case, I may wish to add an upper radius. And here you can see very quickly and easily, we have now created a 3D solid model within EWS. We can further utilize EWS for creating 3D solid models from your standard 2D CAD drawing format. As you'd commonly know this as DXF or DWG format. We'll start by opening up a standard 2D turn component, which in this case will be in DXF format. We open this inside of EdgeCam, and as you'd be familiar with, we have our standard side view and top view. We'll now enter EWS. Notice how EWS loads the layers that have been specified in our CAD system. We can switch off the unwanted layers that will be in irrelevant to us throughout the design process. We can switch on layers to refer back to the drawing for dimensional reference. In this case, I'm only interested in the turn profile at this stage, whereby I can simply draw a window and extract that sketch geometry. Utilizing our advanced options, I can further create some construction geometry, which in this case will be an axis of revolution and specify a ball radius. Once I've completed that, I move to my 3D tools and I'm going to simply select my revolve option and here you can see how we have quite easily created a 3D solid model. While going back to our DXF drawing, by double clicking on this, I can now go and add my other layers, which in this case, I would like to go and extract my whole sketch geometry. And here we can see how EdgeCam or EWS has extracted the sketch onto this plane. I can simply select the YZ plane to align it according to the component. And using my cut command, create my whole geometry through my component. We'll be utilizing this sketch later on in our turn demonstration. Let's complete this for a more component. We'll start by opening up a DWG file this time. And 
and in this case we have our standard 3D views, we'll enter EWS and much like the turn profile we'll simply switch off the layers that are irrelevant at this stage. Here I'll simply select and extract my sketch geometry from my DWG file. And I'll extrude this fifty mil down. Referring back to the DXF, I'll go and further extract geometry. And I can set this back to minus 42. Based on the dimensions of my drawing. I can utilize the sketch using my advanced options. I'll simply trim back some unwanted geometry. And utilize that. Mark Street. And I'll extrude that down eight millimeters. Moving back to our DXF. By double clicking we can change our command, extract that sketch and extrude using our cut command down 40 millimeters. We'll select our pocket and in this case we'll extrude that one down 40 as well. And further go and select a whole geometry. Using our cut command, these will be down to a depth of 25. And we can select to cut this the entire component. Lastly, we'll refer back, we'll select our external profile, extract that sketch, and we'll create some additional geometry as we are simply only creating a cut command. We'll go down five millimeters. Look at that. And there we have it a 3D solid model created fast and accurately related to a 2D DWG file. We'll utilize this component later on in our milling demonstration. Another great application of EWS is its ability to utilize third-party CAD models as reference files. Why would we do this or need this you may ask? Well, we may want to create additional jigs or fixtures or collision checking inside of Edgecam when programming our parts or alternatively we may want to create subsidiary components around a reference file. We'll open up a standard Autodesk invent a part file. Notice how we can do this without the need of a translator. This is loaded into Edgecam. We activate EWS. 
EWS asks us to pick a solid that we wish to use as a reference file. And this is then loaded into EWS for subsequent design work. In this case, I'll simply create a re rectangle that I wish to use as a mounting plate. Specifying depth and general dimensions. And I can also create additional clamps around my component. Simply sketching and constraining those dimensions. Here we can see very quickly and easily we have utilized a third party CAD model, in this case Autodesk Inventor, as a reference part for creating jigs, fixtures and clamps.